welcome to embedded system lecture series this is my first video of embedded system lecture series where i'll discuss introduction to embedded system and to have this video these are my session outlines where first i'll be discussing what is system then we will see what is embedded system after that i'll explain you characteristics of embedded system then we will see different constraints which is there with embedded system and then i'll explain you advantages and disadvantages of embedded system so let us begin this session with first agenda that is what is system so here i'll give you three different definitions of system that will gives you idea about what is system so when we talk about system it is a way of working and it is used to organize or execute one or many task so system is a way of working i'll give you example also see second definition is a system is also arrangement in which we assemble multiple units together and we execute particular plan or program so here multiple units are assembled together and we execute particular plan or program and third easier definition is system processes on input signal and it produces output signal so you can observe here we have input signal and that is given to system and it produces output over here let me give you one very interesting example of watch so in watch we have output that is a display of time and to have display of time hardware elements are needles chassis strap battery and the dial and this watch example is not example of embedded system it is example of system where these are the different elements which is assembled together and it is used to display time you can see this is the watch which is mechanical watch in that all these elements are there and this is not embedded system right so let us try to understand now what is embedded system so when we talk about embedded system it contains computer hardware with software so embedded system contains computer hardware with software and it has major three components one is hardware in hardware we can have microprocessor or microcontroller in embedded system now second component is application software now in application software we can have operating system and those operating system can be windows operating system there can be linux operating system there can be mac operating system there are many operating system which is used to design embedded system and third is real time operating system now real time operating system that is used to have supervises to have scheduling to have inter task communication to have resource sharing and to have memory allocation of embedded system so these are the different tasks which we execute by having real time operating system so these are the three very important components of embedded system hardware application software and real time operating system now let us see the different characteristics which we need to focus while we design embedded system so embedded system characteristic may be task specific it may be time specific sometimes we focus on efficiency of the system sometimes we need to see reliability of the system we need to see whether given system is stable or not and very essential it has to be lower cost and it should require less power 
So these are the different characteristics which we need to focus about when we design embedded system. Now let us see the basic constraint which is there while we design embedded system. So the first one that is available system memory. See based on available memory we can have length of the program which we store in our hardware. In hardware we can have microprocessor or microcontroller and along with that there is a finite amount of memory. If you have larger length of program in that case you need to have more memory. So first constraint that is available system memory. Second is processor speed. If we have higher speed of processor then we can have faster execution of task. So processor speed also defines execution whether it is faster or slower. So that is also very essential constraint. And third is power dissipation. See when we design embedded system at that time we will be using a battery and that battery is having fixed amount of charge. So if power dissipation is higher then your system will drain power faster and you cannot utilize your embedded system for longer duration. Like we have a mobile phone. If your mobile phone is getting discharged within a half an hour in that case you cannot utilize that for entire day. Right. So power dissipation that is also very essential constraint when we design embedded system. So here when we design embedded system we need to see the performance of the system. We need to see how much power dissipation is there with the given system. We need to see what, are, what is the size of that system. We need to see whether this system design is having compatibility with entire system or not. Sometimes we have a major system in that we use smaller element as an embedded system. So there has to have compatibility of given system with major system. Right. So design is also essential. And we need to observe manufacturing cost of given system. So these are the constraints which we need to focus when we design embedded system. Now let us see the advantages of embedded system. So we can have smaller size with embedded system. We can load it fast. We have easier management with embedded system. We can have low cost applications and dedicated system to the one device that is possible by having embedded system. And in that case we observe we have very good performance and it uses less resources like memory and microprocessor. There are disadvantages which is there with embedded system. One is difficult to upgrade with respect to time technology is getting upgrade right. So in embedded system we use fixed microcontroller. So it is very difficult to upgrade with respect to time. If any problem occurs then we need to reset the setting. Hardware is limited. Troubleshooting is very difficult as it is compact system. Once we design it we fabricate it on PCB and if any problem is arising in that case it will be difficult to have troubleshooting. Default to transfer data from one system to another system. Right. So here these are the disadvantages which is there with embedded system. I hope you have understood this video. Your suggestions are motivating me and it will give benefits to students those who are studying from this platform. So please give your valuable suggestions. Thank you so much for watching this video.